On the hot water side, you need to tee the vacuum breaker in on a 300ml riser and the tee has to be a minimum of 200mm away from the hot water outlet. This is a thermal insulation which is a glass wool type material, fiberglass. It's normally used in steam plants in factories. It is water absorbent so it needs to have a casing over the top of it. This is an insulation used by air conditioned technicians. It is very conducive to what we use in the solar water heating environment. However, it is not UV stable, so it needs to be painted if it's going to be exposed to the sun. This is another common type of insulation. It has a zip lock, so it can be installed after all the pipes have been installed and can be clipped on to the pipes. This is also not UV stable and needs to be painted if it's exposed to the sun. Remember that all pipes to and from the collector should be insulated as well as the pipes going from the geyser to the hot water taps. Here we have a 220 volt pump. Uh, it works off of a controller or a timer. It needs to be installed with a non-return valve. In this case, this is a willow pump. It's a very common pump used in South Africa currently. It needs to be installed either in a horizontal position or in a vertical position to avoid damaging the bearings. If it's in a hanging position or in a horizontal position, it tends to wear bearings. Here we have a low watt, low voltage 12 volt pump. It runs normally off of a photovoltaic cell. As you can see, this is a used one. It has only one moving part which is the impeller. It also needs to be installed with a non-return valve as per manufacturer's instructions. This pump has to be either in a horizontal position like such, in this position or hanging. It should not be in this position. If air is trapped inside this cavity over here, it creates a bubble and the impeller starts cavitating and what happens is the stainless steel rubs against the inner casing and we have a leak within no time. This is your standard 10 watt photovoltaic cell. It runs the 12 volt low watt pump. It cannot be shaded while it is running. Even if 10% of the cell is shaded, the pump will stop. This is a non-return valve, a spring type. It allows water to go in one direction, but it stops the water from going back. This helps with the pumped system. It stops the water at night from coming back and cooling off the tank. It also keeps the pump primed when the mains has been switched off. This is an air relief valve. What it does is it lets air out and losing water out of the system. It's similar to a flow valve in your toilet system. The float is lighter than water but heavier than air. So what happens is the air from the system accumulates inside the little reservoir and there's enough air in it. It releases the air at the top and when the mains pressure comes up to it, it shuts the valve off at least. On an indirect system, an expansion vessel is needed as the glycol or the antifreeze solution expands and the heat exchanger and the collector will not be able to take the pressure. There's a bladder inside of this vessel and between the vessel and the bladder we have compressed air. When the antifreeze or glycol is heated up, it expands, it gives a cushion and when it cools down at night, it's released back into the system. A tempering valve or mixing valve should be used on a system such as a thermosiphon close couple or a thermosiphon system where the temperature cannot be controlled below 60 degrees. This is because we do not want to burn or scald in the showers or on the mixing components. A differential controller is an electronic device which calculates the difference in temperature between the collector and the tank or the water that's being heated. This controller has two probes, one which goes to the collector, the top of the collector, and another probe which goes into the tank. It calculates the difference between the two. If the difference is greater than 8 degrees Celsius, the pump will be switched on and it will pump either the water, which is if it's a direct system, or the antifreeze, if it's an indirect system, through the heat exchanger or the geyser, increasing the temperature of the water and as soon as the temperature of the water is within 4 degrees Celsius of the temperature of the collector, the pump will switch off. By this time, the collector will have reached a lower temperature and if the temperature of the water exceeds a preset limit, the pump will also switch off. This controller has more features than just a differential controlling of the collector. It also has a freeze protection, which, uh, which is needed in all direct systems.